So I think a couple of weeks back, we did a video on the Marvel's director, Nia DaCosta. And I remember specifically where she was playing both the racism and the sexism card in one shot. And apparently now she's doing it again. And I think the reason why she's doing this is simply because she doesn't have any actors to promote her film. She doesn't have anything whatsoever. She can only rely on herself and whoever is able to speak who is not part of the strike. That's the most hilarious thing about all of this. So this seems to be Nia DaCosta's play card because now apparently Nia has decided to do it yet again to promote her film. We have an article from Bounding Into Comics that says the Marvel's director, Nia DaCosta, unsurprisingly plays racism and sexism card in promotion of the Marvels. So we're going to get into this article, guys, from Bounding Into comics but of course before we do just consider hit that subscribe button man i'm shadow ban as hell and like the video to push us out into the youtube algorithm it says the marvel's director nia DaCosta, unsurprisingly played the racism and sexism card while promoting the upcoming film it would not be a promotion for a walt disney film without someone playing a victim card and DaCosta made sure the marvels would not be an exception Speaking with Vanity Fair, DaCosta stated sometimes as a black woman, you realize that people think you take up more space than you actually do. What? What? <laughs> or your voice sounds louder to people than it actually is, because it probably is. Or your tone is more stern than it actually is, because it actually is. <laughs> you know, I remember reading the article um, from Nia DaCosta prior, and I remember saying to myself, wow, it must really suck to just constantly have to live your life through the eyes of race and it just looks like she's just doubling down on it man she is absolutely doubling down and trying to make the claim that apparently it's just so difficult being a black woman you know what i mean like i i can't believe she said this you realize that people think you take up more space than you actually do like what what does that even mean? I mean, if you are being belligerent, if you are being very ratchet, if you're just out there screaming and yelling and trying to pretend as if you're talking, because that's what a lot of people do too. They'll scream, they'll yell, and then they'll say that they're not yelling and they're not screaming, they're just talking loud. You know what I mean? You ever seen, you ever meet people like that? That's how a lot of these people are. And, and it really is a sad thing to see because it's not just black women that do that everybody does that right you all have you have ratchet people in all races but this particular person happens to be black and they're playing the victim card because that's probably all they know how to do it says the costa added that some crew members on previous sets she worked on said things that are super inappropriate that you would just never say to anyone else because they were so specific to my gender my race and my age while she did not provide any examples, of course not, or name any names, of course she won't, Vanity Fair's Rebecca Ford made it very clear none of this happened on the set of the Marvels. She had a very different experience on the Marvels, fortunately, in part because she had the power to hire the people she wanted for her team. The Costa said, I realized it wasn't ever going to be about how much power I amassed or how many great movies I made or if I won awards or it was always just going to be the people that I surrounded myself with. She added, the thing that I've been most surprised by lately is how much respect I'm getting from these middle aged white dudes that i work with well uh, whoa whoa Let, let's let's dial back a little bit first i highly doubt that you're getting what you would call respect from the middle-aged white dude you might be getting from some but probably not all you're probably confusing a fear of cancellation for not doing anything that your beck and call requires versus actual respect you know these guys are probably scared shitless because they can lose their jobs at any moment if they don't call you their black queen overlord it, it just really I, I really don't buy that all these people are respecting someone who is obviously so deep in the victim game that they just don't see themselves as anything other than a victim. It really is quite sad. But again, I guess, you know, maybe some of them are liberal or whatever, and they might just, uh, you know, bow down to their black overlords or whatever the case may be, as they've been taught by the Democratic Party. But other than that, I mean, it really just, it shouldn't be that simple. You know, I really don't think it is that simple. I'm almost positive she's misconstruing other things for that. So it says not only did the Costa play the racism and sexism card, but she also appeared to distance herself from the film by claiming it is actually Marvel Studios executive Kevin Feige's film. The Costa discussed the advice she received from Black Panther director Ryan Coogler about just being herself when she was initially tapped to direct the film. She recalled, you can't do anything but be yourself. So bring that to the table. They can choose to take some and leave some, but that's what your job is. Clearly, the implication here is that Marvel Studios and Kevin Feige have overriding story authority, especially when it comes to creating a final cut for the movie. 
I mean, but it doesn't that for, isn't that for like every movie? Every movie that Marvel comes out with, I'm pretty sure Kevin Feige has the final say. It's not just because she's black and she's a woman, and that's why you know Kevin Feige is a white male, so he gets final say. He gets final say on everything. He gets final say even on the TV shows. Everybody answers to Kevin Feige. So I don't I don't know why she's trying to make this seem as this is something that's particular to her movie when it's everybody's movies, it's everybody's TV shows. Everybody in Marvel answers to Kevin Feige. But again, if you think like a victim, if your entire life is based in victimhood, you're going to take everything as a personal attack. You're going to take everything as they're out to get you, essentially. And that's what it is. It says, in fact, later in the expose, Vanity Fair's Ford noted that film's post-production proved to be the most challenging given the film needed to connect with the Miss Marvel Disney Plus series as well as lead into the future of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. To this end, DaCosta admitted it is Kevin Feige production. It is his movie. She elaborated, so I think you live with that reality but i tried to go in with the knowledge that some of you is going to take a back seat well again that's just that's how it is for literally every marvel project i would imagine over the last you know 13 14 15 years however long kevin feige has been in charge of the mcu i just i, I don't get the whole point of trying to make this into a personal attack and it's just kind of strange to me because it's very clear that Kevin Feige is the overarching, you know, overlord of MCU and Marvel. And to try to make it seem as if you're black, so that's why they won't give you total control, just seems a little bit odd. So, of course, you should realize that at the end of the day, there is somebody who's in charge at Marvel, and it's not you. And if you're going to take that personally, you probably shouldn't be in a director role. You know what I mean? And a lot of other directors, I'm sure, have to answer to Kevin Feige and deal with that nonsense. So you really shouldn't feel like you're any special and try to avoid having to deal with him, even though it's your movie and you're directing it, so to speak. So I think this woman really has a big problem at the end of the day. I really is. I think it's quite kind of sad when you see women do this, especially women who are in prominent roles, right? Like, you're a director, of a Marvel film. You know how many people want that? You know how many people want that role? Like, you're, you're a director of a Marvel project, and you're too busy complaining about your race? Like, how do you have the time to do this? How do you have the mental fortitude to just sit there and blame everything on your race when you are in one of the most privileged, prominent positions in a, in a studio? I, I just, <laughs> you're a director. Like, I just, I just don't, I don't get that. I don't get that. You guys know what I mean? Like, I just, I don't get that. If I wanted to be a director on a film, I wouldn't give a shit, man. Like, I, I'm, I'm a director at the end of the day. That is a huge title, and that should carry some self-esteem boost with that. But apparently this woman, and you could tell by her face, she just looks always angry like every picture i see her always looks angry and she's gonna say well you think i look angry because i'm black no you look angry because you look angry at the end of the day so anyway guys thank you so much for watching this video i hope you did enjoy it and if you did consider leaving me a subscribe i would greatly appreciate it. don't forget to like the video comment let me know what you thought and i'll see you guys on the next one hypnotic out